If you have insulin resistance, you do not have unexplained infertility. I'm Dr. Kalia Waddles, a naturopathic and functional medicine doctor specializing in fertility. Let me explain what I mean. Insulin is a really crucial hormone in our body. And I like to point out that insulin is a hormone because when we have conversations about hormonal health, I think insulin is often left out of the picture, but it's actually a crucial player. So before we get into all the juicy details, let's just recap what insulin does. Insulin is secreted in response to elevated glucose. It's a hormone that's produced by the pancreas and it facilitates the uptake of glucose into our tissues from the bloodstream. So it allows our, for example, our muscle cells to soak up glucose from our bloodstream so that that glucose can be used as energy. The take home message is insulin lets our cells know that energy is available. So let's say we are intaking more energy than our body is using up. We are going to store that energy in our cells as you know, glucose and fatty acids. That energy is going to accumulate inside our cell. So when insulin shows up to tell our cells, hey, energy is available, our cells are going to be like, okay, I already have plenty of energy. They are going to become insulin resistant. So now there's certain tissue types like our skeletal muscle and adipose tissue, which is fat cells. They are going to need more and more and more and more insulin to have an effect. They are going to be insulin resistant and more and more and more insulin is going to show up. That's why we're going to see an elevated insulin in the blood, which is called hyperinsulinemia. But other tissue types like our heart, our brain, our liver, our ovaries, they're going to remain insulin sensitive. So all this insulin that is circulating in the bloodstream can have adverse effects in those tissues. And let's talk about what that means for fertility. So inside the ovary, hyperinsulinemia or elevated insulin can really affect these ovarian th cells called theca cells. Theca cells produce androgen hormones. They make testosterone. So let's, let's use PCOS as a prime example. PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome, and it's characterized by elevated androgens, elevated testosterone. And we know that many women with PCOS also have insulin resistance. What can happen is testosterone impairs the development of our follicles, which are essentially these little egg sacs that our eggs are swimming in. And uh, that impaired maturation, it leads to all these super tiny follicles, super tiny egg sacs, in the ovaries rather than like one big plump juicy follicle that is ready to ovulate an egg. So cysts really just means small underdeveloped follicles because there's too much testosterone. Now another piece to this story is that elevated insulin will upregulate an enzyme called aromatase which irreversibly converts testosterone to estrogen. So sometimes people will have these symptoms of what we might consider estrogen excess. They have heavy bleeding, they have really terrible periods, they have a lot of mood changes, they have breast tenderness, they have a lot of bloating. And they're like, okay, how does this make sense that I have elevated testosterone and I have elevated estrogen? Well, it's because the ovaries are pumping out all of this testosterone, which just gives more substrate, more material to be aromatized and turned into estrogen. So now you can have androgen excess and you have elevated estrogen. And to take that even a step further, if your testosterone is so elevated that you are not ovulating, you're also going to have low progesterone because remember, um, you only make progesterone after you ovulate. After you ovulate that follicle, where the egg has burst from, it becomes a structure called the corpus luteum that fills with fat and starts pumping out progesterone. So if we're not ovulating, we're not going to make progesterone. And as you can see, now we're getting into this whole big hormonal imbalance pattern. I think you can see here why if you have insulin resistance, this is not unexplained infertility. But I see so many patients who come to me with this diagnosis and their fasting insulin is through the roof. 
I recommend that anyone who's on a fertility journey measures their fasting insulin. It's such an amazing way for us to get a snapshot into your metabolic health. And this is something I measure on all of my one-to-one -one patients and everyone in my functional fertility blueprint program. So if you want more information, you want to understand what labs you need to do, how to interpret them, how to understand if you have insulin resistance, head to my website at drkaliawaddles.com. You can download a preconception lab checklist to talk to your own doctor about, or you can look into working with me in my private practice or in my online program. See you soon.